so excited because, of course, I get to be here with you all today and to talk to you about um, not just my week, but A Course in Miracles and um, all the things that have been laid on my heart to share with you as a result of me doing this. Can I tell you what a blessing it is to be here and to be a part of um, this particular sharing and um, I want to welcome those of you who are watching me here on Ustream and um, as you know that I am both talking over acmigatherradio.org as well as on ustream.tv forward slash Sandra said it. You can also see it on my um, Sandra Unplugged from the Sandra Thrives page on Facebook. So facebook.com forward slash Sandra Thrives, T-H-S-A-N-D-R-A-T-H-R-I-V-E-S, Sandra Thrives. And um, when you hit either of those, you can watch me as well as listen to me there. I am excited, you know, as always, to talk to you today. I was, um, you know, I listen from time to time when, even when I'm not on Pal Talk, I kind of tune in to listen. And on Sundays, sometimes I go from listening to programs all day. So I hear you guys and just, just love the insights and reflections that others share, even though I don't necessarily get in the chat room or want to be involved in that way. It's like I have A Course in Miracles floating through my house on Sunday's afternoon, and um, and it feels good. It feels wonderful to tune in and listen, and it also triggers different insights um, for me different things that I um, want to focus in on. And, you know, everything comes to us for a particular reason for us to hear or share or um, because it's our own issues. I mean, usually it's our own issues. Everything is that is before me is for me. And so I need to check it out and see what it is that I'm supposed to learn. So um, for the last few days, I've been um, you know, thinking about what I was going to share today. And it was so interesting because this morning when I got up, I did a quick prayer and I opened up my Course in Miracles book and I opened up to a particular chapter that was very, uh, not even a chapter, it was a lesson that was very intriguing to me. And um, so I wanted to share both the lesson and something outside of the lesson that I thought was such a blessing um, in the sense that it gave me so much insight. So let me start off as I normally do by telling you the, or saying for you, or saying for myself, the introduction of the Course in Miracles that is found right in the front of your book, right behind the table of contents. And it reads just like this. It says, this is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The aim of this course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing your blocks from your it does aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposites. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened, and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Ooh, I, you know, I, I love that. I love it. I love it so much. Um, the aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what could be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. 
So today when I turn to lesson 67 and um, it just jumped off the page at me, I thought, wow, that's what I'm going to talk about. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Lesson number 67 in The Course in Miracles says, love created me like itself. Love created me like itself. You guys, I have on my phone had for quite some time, you know how you have the banners on your phone? The banner on my phone says that I am love so that I remember it every second of every day, not only what I am and who I am, but what I am here to flow into the world because it's important to me to talk about and to stand in the position of being love personified here on earth. And um, and so I want to talk to you a little bit today about this whole concept of love, because a lot of times I am quick to listen to things that other people say or do and think that would be blocking love as opposed to um you know, allowing love to have room in your life and to flow. And so I'm constantly thinking about what love is not and being aware of what love is not because, you know, this idea that we can define what it is, it's really hard to, to, to nail down exactly what love is because for so many of us, love means so many different things. And a lot of times we have it attached to our perception of who we are, a body, and, and my body loves your body or loves another body, and we think that that's what love is, and so we get caught up in that thing. But I want to read from you um, from this book I found years ago. Um, I, I want to read for, for you some passages, and you guys will know. I'm not one to spend a lot of time reading to you, but this is such a wonderful little lesson and a wonderful little thing I want to read. I want to read some of it for you. And then um, I'll go on with my little chatty Cathy um, routine that I do. <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that. But I mean, but sometimes that's what I feel like. I'm, I'm chatty Cathy. So I got my little spectacles on here. And, um, and let me just find what it is that I want to read to you. Um, it is from a book. Uh, you guys, sometimes we find these books quite by accident that um, that just speak to our lives. And I don't know that somebody introduced me to this book or if it was something I just found. But when I read to you, you'll understand how I come across books. This one is called I Come as a Brother, Remembrance of Illusions by Bartholomew. For those of you who have not read it, it's a uh, awesome little book and I'm not sure if I read this um, if I if I started reading this before or after I started studying the course or not but I've had it for quite some time it was published in 1985 so I'm not exactly sure when I read it I used to write those things down in the book so I keep track on where certain influences in my thinking come from. But um, nevertheless, I'm reading from this book, I Come as a Brother, and um, and I'm starting off in Chapter 1 and um, What Love is Not. And you'll understand why I'm doing this as soon as I start to read this. Um, and I I just got this this morning that I wanted to read this to you. So, um, you know, hopefully you'll get it. You'll get it. So who will teach you? That's the question. Who will teach you? That depends on who you are and what appeals to you. If you are an individualist and do not want outside help, then use yourself to teach yourself. This is a difficult path because you are not always able to distinguish between what is true and what is false. And you can easily get into tributaries that will bring you into very marshy, uncreative areas in your life. The most obvious thing is to find a temporary authority who has blazed a trail before you and relate to it as best you can your own way. This leaves many paths open. The authority can be a living master or a guru, but they are not the only ones available. 
Many wise ones now dead have very obvious trails behind, have left very obvious trails behind, and all you need to do is contact them through books. Go through the list and find one who harmonizes with your own being and use him or her to help you in your push towards love. Again, I'm reading from I Come as a Brother. You're listening to Sandra um, right here on Ustream and on Cal Talk or ACMI Gather Radio. Old days of radio come out in me where I feel like I have to identify my station and what I'm doing. So I'm still reading from you a review out of this book, and then I'll get into discussing with you some more stuff. So I'm starting over again reading. So you need to discover these areas within you that express yourselves in unloving ways and then find an authority who embodies the reality of the love you are looking for. Again, it does not have to be someone who is still on the earth plane. The illusion of separate bodies is yours, and that perception is not the highest available. Mm. Because someone is no longer in body form does not mean that their dynamic, creative wisdom is not available to you. Where would this wisdom go? It is always available in the great sea of consciousness, permeating and extending into all parts of this ever-present knowing. Great truth and wisdom never die. They have a momentum within themselves that moves throughout the createdness. So be aware that if you feel an attraction towards a path or a truth, the truth is still in your words, written in the etheric or the ethers. It can still be drawn upon and brought back into dynamic awareness. Now, I love that because um, it is, you know, it is telling us that, that wisdom, love, wisdom, it never dies. It is out there. It is accessible to you at all times. Now, um, let me finish because let me go ahead reading because I want to get to what I'm trying to get to. If, for instance, you decide the way for you is the way of Christ or Christos, understand that his wisdom and love are still available. I am speaking of the dynamic, creative wisdom that is embodied in his truth as it was originally given, not reinterpreted that the not the reinterpretation that passes for his truth now. Okay. Anywhere along what you call the continuum of time that any of the followers of Christos have been able, mm, anywhere along what you call the continuum of time that any of the followers of Christos have been able to tap into this truth, they have been able to keep this momentum going. This is what a loving student does for a great teacher. He takes the teaching in, understands and embodies that teaching, and then by his own attention and experience of it, he keeps it alive in an ongoing state. In your words, he passes it on. So the student is doing a great service by being the embodiment and the fulfillment of that teaching. In moving it out onto the earth plane, a more dynamic understanding of that original teaching is possible. That is why any of those great ones who have dealt with this dynamic wisdom is still available to you today. Mm, so I, so, okay, so, so here I want to, I want to, I'm going to go on because I want, um, there is some, some, some juicy stuff, um, that I want to get to. I know I, I'm, I'm a little impatient myself because I love reading. I love books. But here's, here's I think, um, this is going to tell you a little bit more about how I get or, or attracted to things. When you pick your path and become centered on it, if you are humble enough to ask that wisdom come to you in some form, things begin to happen. And they will happen in various ways. You will find that book 
that you were that was given to you years ago now has your attention or one that you have already read will come to your attention again and you will learn from it in new ways now i'll tell you i was at a bookstore one time and um i don't know which one it was b dalton's or somewhere something like that dalton's bookstore i'm not quite sure if that was the one or not but i can remember being in this um in this bookstore and the the shelves were really high and so usually what i do is i go down this one column and then i go over and i look down the next column and then this particular day i'm in the bookstore and i'm looking for a book I'm looking for a particular book. So I knew the name of the book, but I'm just kind of like once I looked for the book and where it should have been, I just started going, you know, and, and looking at the titles. And sometimes, um, you know how that is, a title just strikes you. I mean, it just struck me, you know. So I'd read titles and I'd think, mm, that's a good title. Mm, that's a good title. And I'd just kind of read the titles and I'd keep going. And so on this particular day, I was going and I must have been around the second shelf or the second uh, row in that column. So on the second row, I see a book and it caught my eye and it said, Ye are God's. And I kind of thought, mm, that's a good title. And I go on and I'm reading the book titles, looking for a particular book. And so then when I get to the next column of books, I'm going down and I'm reading and I'm getting to and I'm going about the third row. And all of a sudden I hear something fall. And I'm, you know, nobody else is over in this section with me. It's like the, you know, the, the religious or spiritual book section or something like that. I don't even, I, it wasn't self-help. It was, it was like the, yeah, like a spiritual metaphysical section. And so something falls and I look down on the floor and this book, Ye Are Gods, had fallen off of the shelf onto the floor without me touching it. And so I stood there and I looked at the book and I'm looking at it down on the floor and I'm thinking like, mm, okay, I got the message. So I, of course, picked up the book and immediately took it to the cash register saying, forget whatever it was that I thought I was supposed to get. This is what I'm going to get because it jumped off the shelf at me. Now, that book stayed on my shelf when I got home. I put it on my shelf because I, I read the introduction, I think. And I put it on my shelf, not really, you know, finding that it resonated with me. But it sat there for over a year. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm thinking to myself, ye are gods, let me read it. And of course, sure enough, there was something there that I was supposed to see. And that book, and there are other books that I bought just based on that kind of thing, sort of resonates with me from time to time. They just come to me. And I know that it's something that I'm supposed to pick up. Like when I read the lesson today, um, I, I knew that this book was something I was supposed to share with you. And I don't know why. I just know that I, you know, that I, I'm supposed to share it. And so that's what I do. I do as I'm directed. So, um, so, so that's why I'm sharing this book. The, the other book, and I'll tell you guys this real quick, the, uh, because it just came into my mind, it popped into my mind, but another book that came to me in that fashion was um, the book, uh, wow, and it just went out of my head just that quick. So Ye Are Gods was, um, I forget who wrote that book, but then the other book was Acting As If The God In All Of Life Mattered, and um, that was about the entire universe being alive and communicating with us at every instance, if only we would pay attention. And it gives you a respect for, and, and I'm a person who in college, I was um, a philosophy major, as, as many of you may know by now. But um, I'd met this woman during a summer session who was very interesting, and she told me she was a witch and that she practiced white magic. And she talked to me about nature and, um, and, and told me things that had never really occurred to me before that point. Um, but once she kind of pulled that veil back from over my eyes to see that Yes, indeed, everything. And and as kids, we know this. When we're children, we know these things. 
Um, but I think we lose that knowledge somewhere along the lines. We get to a point where we're not in respect or reverence of what we see every day. And so there is becomes this disconnect. And so she opened that up for me again. And once she opened my eyes and, and shared that, that knowledge that I had when I was a child, when she did that, it kind of opened up so many other things for me. So, um, and, and I want to tell you about what happened last night, but I get so caught up in this. Let me finish reading this and then I'll go on and talk about some other stuff um, after I'm done with this. So, um, friends will give you things and you'll begin to hear new ideas. All of this may appear to happen in very mundane ways, but you should give due attention to them. If your thrust towards freedom is sincere, you will find the vastness will expedite your way toward it. People will come out of the woodwork whom you never dreamed were there. All kinds of seemingly unrelated events will take place, and you must be aware that they do not happen by caprice. You have put out a strong call within your being that says, please help me. This is what I need. Once you align yourself through that yearning, it starts to happen. So then it goes on to say, now what does all this have to do with love? It has everything to do with it because love is not something you do or something you can contrive. Love is something that you allow to have its movement through you and around you. Your true nature is divine love. This is not something you are aware of, for you have attached your vision to a limited meaning of what love is, that you are caught, that you are caught in its unreality. Let me read that again. This is not something you are aware of, for you have attached your vision to such a limited meaning of what love is, that you are caught in its unreality caught. You think love is one body caring for another body or caring for a few select bodies around you. This is nonsense. Love is not something that you do. In a state of love, the one fact you are constantly and utterly aware of is that love is something you are. And you cannot are something. That's what it says. Love is something you are and you cannot are something. It's not what you do. It's what you are. Mm. I love that. You know, um, you know, people used to talk about stuff and say that love is a verb because it is active, you know. It is, you know, it, it, it is a thing that is active. But then if you notice, it, it is also a presence. It is, oh, it is what you are. It is, let me, let me, let me, let me go on reading for a second. Love is your very essence. It is your very being and you have no control over it for it is what you are. It is given in the sense that it has been given to you by the source, that source with the capital S. And out of it, all things are created. So when you feel yourself to be in a state of love, you also realize that it is something that is totally out of your control. Now, and this is coming from a woman with control issues. So let me, um, I'm skipping forward a little bit because I'm going to skip over all that stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to read to you this part, and then I'm going to get to my talking part, my chit-chat. Not that I'm not always chit-chatting. Any relationship, my friends, that you can fall into, you can also fall out of. Anything that comes and goes, as does the ego-based feelings of love, is not the real thing. The test as to whether something is representative of the source, with a capital S, is Simply another illusion, the test as to whether something is representative of the source or is simply another illusion of the ego can be made by holding any of your feelings or your thoughts for a moment and asking, is this feeling something that is always with me no matter what else is present? If it is not, 
then understand that it is simply another piece of the rising and falling play of the createdness on the earth plane and has nothing to do with the real createdness of the divine. As such, it does not really need your attention. You can use it as your criteria for this when it happens. If you can hold an event in your mind for one moment, you will be able to know whether that thought or feeling surrounding it is always there. If it is so, then that feeling is truly a part of the whole and should be giving due reverence in your mind. Again, I say that you cannot make yourself love, you cannot will yourself to love, because you are already love. But what you can do is get in touch with the state that is will yourself to want to love. So, um, so it, it's interesting because I, um, when I read that book, when I read I Come as a Brother, it was a long time ago. And I remember thinking that I really wanted to embody, embody what it means to be loved. I wanted to be love personified and to recognize that that was my very being. And so, of course, it was no wonder that I was set on a path to, um, when, when they say to remove the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, it is something that kind of um, took that veil from over my eyes that had me thinking that love was about something else, that love was about two bodies and, and uh, whether or not those two bodies got together or not. It is... Um, it, 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 it was just like something that I knew was present. I knew that I was loved, but I just didn't know how to get to that point. I knew that I wanted to, to not be caught up in as the world sees it. Because, you know, a lot of times what we do is, is we find all the ways, all the things about ourselves that is not loving. You know, so we get caught up in the judgments. We get caught up in in what we think we need to have in order to be loved, um, in order for people to love us. We get caught up in in, in these thoughts. It, it's like we're we're caught in a system that tells us that something is wrong. I was watching a documentary because I was trying to find um, a documentary that I'd seen before a while back on fear. And uh, for some reason, I thought it was a Michael Moore um, documentary and I went looking for it and I didn't find that. I found a different documentary and it was on behavioral science, I think it was. And it was saying that our real motivation is not love, but fear. And as I watched the first few minutes of it, I was struck by um, by some of the comments that were made. I was thinking that if love is what we are, love is kind of like, um, okay, so, so we talk about light and darkness, and we say that one is not a thing of itself. So when we say let there be light, there is this ability to say, okay, and now light is present. It's light. We see light, right? But, but darkness is not an entity of itself. It is just really a state of being. And so when we think of it like that, it's kind of like in this particular atmosphere, it's kind of like air. Love is like air. It is simply what is there. It's simply what is. What we notice is the antithesis of it. We notice when the air is absent or when the air is thin or when there's something else in the air. But air itself, since it is what is natural, since it is, it is, you know, the, the basis of all of this, you know, that in this atmosphere, what we breathe, we don't notice when it's there. We only notice when it's changed. Love is our natural state. We don't notice until something that is not loving comes up. And so when it's not loving, we're really clear about what's not loving. So I'm really clear about when things, when, when I, when I get the perception of things being unloving or, or somehow out of whack, I'm real clear about that. So sometimes I can sit there and say to myself, what love is not much quicker we we can do that much quicker than we can say exactly what love is so so when we feel something that is different from that 
We know it. So in this particular documentary, I didn't I didn't get to see all of it. I just watched the the beginning part. And it was talking about that the real motivation is not love but fear because fear is something that causes us to react, to either get scared or to run away. I posted the link to that on my Facebook page. So if you're at all interested in watching the documentary, you can catch it on my Facebook page. Today is um, August 21st, 2012. I posted it then. So if you're watching after the fact, go back and you'll see the little link that takes you to that particular documentary. But fear, the opposite of love is fear. And so if love is what's natural, if love is what you are, if love is what you and I are, and that's our natural state of being, then we, when we get something that is opposed to that, which would be fear, then we respond to that. So a lot of times what happens is, is we get caught up responding to what we are not rather than what we are. And people allow that to be their main motivation. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself as I read again um, lesson number 67. It's so wonderful because it says in here that today's idea is a complete and accurate statement of what you are. Love created me like itself. This is why you are the light of the world, it says. This is why God appointed you as the world's Savior. This is why the Son of God looks at you for his salvation. Whew. He is saved by what you are. We will make every effort today to reach this truth about you and to realize fully, if only for a moment, that it is true. So then it goes on to say, we are trying today to undo your definition of God and replace it with his own. So, you know, it's so funny because so many people are caught up in what they have traditionally been taught that God is. And so they get caught up in their fearful thinking, thinking that God is this fearful image, something that needs to be feared, something that they fear, based on what? I mean, if we could just, if no other part of our learning, that nothing else, if we unlearn nothing else, we need to unlearn that part of us that says that we need to fear God. God is, it is in God that we live, move, and have our being. This idea of love means that God is giving unconditionally, unconditionally to us at every moment of the day. That means it lends its being to us, its beingness to us, to animate our lives, to animate us, to, to give us this energy to express who we are and what we are at any given moment. If that is not love, then tell me what is. I mean, that divine givingness of itself to us as itself continuously expressing in ways is what love is. It is God flowing through this being, this, this body, this, this intelligence, this consciousness that is Sandra flowing into the world. That is love. I mean, that is love. And, and not only that, the moment I look through, if I, if I, oh, I love in, um, in a science of mind, Jean Houston uses a line that, um, that in there, she says that we are the lensing point of God consciousness here on earth. So a lot of us, many, many people, you know, sometimes I think I'm so strange because there are so many things that I get and that I Feel that sometimes it, I don't necessarily hear other people say it, but so what? 
So, so um, one particular day, I'm in my closet and I'm meditating, and I'm I'm in there and I'm going through, you know, I'm, I'm stilling my mind, I'm I'm getting this place, and I'm I'm just in my meditation point, and I started thinking to myself like, okay, like the world, all of this stuff out here is not real. I'm, I'm thinking that all the stuff that passes away, all the stuff that's temporary is not real. So really, what am I to look at? And so then I started thinking about what is real. And so what I did was in consciousness, I turned back onto myself. I turned back. And in turning back onto myself, it was like I felt something blink that was not me. I don't know if I shared this with you before, but it is it is like this realization that there is something bigger than you or I that is that is experiencing this life, this 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 all of this as us the lensing point. I am host to God. I mean, is that not awesome? And so when you start thinking about this idea, love created me like itself, like itself with a capital I, like itself with, you know, and, 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 and it's God's self. It created me like itself. And so I'm allowing this to flow through me. And as I allow this to flow through me unencumbered, as I freely give, I'm freely giving as God gives to me. I'm freely letting this flow just like God flows through and to me. The moment I get caught up in my judgments, the moment I get caught up in thinking you're something separate or different or or I need not, you know, tell you how wonderful you are. The moment I give into those ideas is the moment that I start clamping down on and shutting off little pieces of love. I, and, and so what I try to do is get out of my own way. I'm not I'm not out here, you know, like trying to separate off and tell you that there's something wrong with you because if I tell you there's something wrong with me then there's got to it's something wrong with you then there's got to be something wrong with me because we are all created out of this love love created me like itself doesn't just say for Sandra alone it says for each and every one of us Ooh, it's so fabulous when we all, all understand that so um so so if we allow God to replace the the definitions that we've learned from the world with his own definitions, we'll see that this love, this very love is the very thing that we are. So, you know, it's and I don't think we remind each other enough of just how wonderful we are, how wonderful you are, just as you were created, because you were created to be like you are, no matter what your judgments are about that. I don't know why you would get caught up in trying to, to judge things, judge other people, judge all these other ideas. That is, ooh, that is what you are. I love this stuff. So, um... So, 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 I, I, you know what, and I could sit here and read this whole lesson for you, but I don't want to, because you can have it, if you're listening to ACMI Gather Radio, it's probably because you've got A Course in Miracles yourself. Read Lesson 67, Love Created You Like Itself, and if you keep reiterating that to yourself, if you keep thinking that to yourself, you'll stop judging yourself. Yeah, Lynn, it is the truth. Teach only love, for that is what you are. That is what you are, that very being. And so the moment, there is a line in this book. Oh, I love this particular line. Let me see if I can find it for you real quick. I love this because because it was, you know, this, this little juicy book was one of the things that helped me to to move out of certain ideas and patterns that I had. Um Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so so let me read a little bit some pieces out of here for you. It says the best game the ego has is the spiritual game. 
This game is incredibly powerful because it makes you superior to everyone around you. Why? Because you're seeking after God. And everyone else knows that to seek after God is the highest good. So, so we have this perception, you know, many people, even though we don't articulate that sometimes, it, it rolls over in the back of our minds that, you know, and, and, and I don't know, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not trying to get you to own this or to put on this garment if it doesn't fit you. If the shoe doesn't fit, I'm, I'm firm to say, take it off if it doesn't fit. But a lot of times what happens is, is that we think, and, and we see it all the time. Jesus talked about it in, in the, um, in the New Testament. He was saying that, you know, a lot of times people want to put on their robes and sit in the best places and the high places and have everybody say hi, rabbi, or hi, this to them, you know, and feel themselves to be important and superior to other people because they are a man or woman of God. And that becomes this like this badge of honor, this cloak that people put on as if it is makes one different from the other. I come as a brother said that's one of the biggest rackets that the ego has going on. It's like looking at it like, oh, here's another juicy tidbit to sink its teeth into to say that somehow they're different or better or somehow, you know, like unlike all the rest of the folks that are out here. But if you realize that it is another game, another trick that your ego plays on you, you'll stop playing that ego game and realize that the moment you try to make yourself superior or different or better or any of those things, that you are just like like getting caught up in that ego thought and cutting yourself off from your brother. And that is the exact opposite of what love means. Love is what you are. And so to let it flow unrestricted. Now, I will be the first to tell you that I have been guilty of in the past thinking that um, I was looking for somebody just like me. And, and I say to people sometimes, I'm looking and I desire to have my Emmy, my mental equivalent, my somebody who who just, you know, mentally I jive with. And, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But what I don't want is, is I don't want somebody who thinks and acts exactly like me. I mean, that would get really boring. I mean, I don't need two of me. I mean, two, one Sandra is enough for the world, right? And if I'm doing my job, we don't need two Sandras. We don't need two people going around parading as if they are me, trying to be me, trying to do me. I, I don't need to be anybody else but me. Because if I was created for a purpose, if, if, if the divine, if the source thought that I had something worthy of sharing, what well, I mean... Hell, I just need to share that. I don't need to go around and try to have everybody else be me. I just need to come fully to the table and be who I am. That's what you need to do as well. Be fully who you are and stop imitating other people. Don't go around trying to be somebody else, not trying to do somebody else. All of that. Not even, you know what, the course is wonderful. I Come as a Brother is wonderful. All these teachings are wonderful. But sing your song. Do your dance. Do you. Whatever that means. So that means that every one of us come to it. We hear the exact same thing. And yet we walk away with something different. Your beauty is in how you are. How you, how you shine your particular light. When this light comes through me, this lensing point of Sandra, it may come out and it may be all purpley pink and, and, and pretty and this, that, and the other. I don't know. That may be my colors, but it doesn't have to be yours. It won't be yours. You'll have a different perspective. You'll have a different prism. You know, like when you remember those kaleidoscopes we used to look in as kids, we put them up to our eye. And as we twist them, all these fabulous colors come out. And no, it's, it's like every time it's something different. And it's the same doggone kaleidoscope. That's the same thing that happens with you and I. This thing, the prism, the, the, the thing that, that all of this information comes through is your information. It's for you to give your take on it, for you to flow it as you flow it and then and then in that you know you're wonderful you're that's how it's supposed to be 
Every place I look, okay, here we are. Every place I look, I see someone like me. <laughs> okay, I see God in you and I love you because the one I love, love lives inside of you and a yearn to be with you. And you know what? It is so true. It's like everybody is just like you. But then again, hey, it, it's the same life. But guess what? The moment you twist that prism, it comes out differently. And you, we all have to do our part to be who we are, to show up as us. Because as you show up as you, you know, somebody is going to hear Sandra. And, and as a matter of fact, you know, not, not all teachers are for everybody. Your divine right teacher will come to you. So you may hear me and you may think Sandra is talking a bunch of gobbledygook. And it may be true from your perspective. You can't even hear me. One of the things I, um, there was a, a Pentecostal, I told you I, I love, I love, um, every way that, that we found to express God, to experience God. I just love them. So I have gone to what, um, you know, different churches, um, and some of the churches that I've visited before have people that speak in tongues. And if you've ever heard someone speak in tongues, you'll know that usually, normally, most people can't understand it, but it will be a message that will be perfectly audible or understandable. He who hath an ear, let him hear, is what it says, is, is what the Bible would say. But he who hath an ear, let him hear what is being said. So those words, when they come out of one person's mouth and they're speaking in what they call tongues, then somebody else is perfectly able to to hear it and translate it and get the meaning from it. Okay, so it's not always something that that everybody understands or everybody perceives. It is coming through one person and another person gets it just like they're supposed to. When we're busy trying to be somebody else or do somebody else or all of this other stuff, we can't show up in our authenticity. We can't show up to be who we are. So by you having a message, by me having a message, my message may sound like gobbledygook to some folks, but other people will get it and they will understand it and they will be like, wow, that's Sandra. She was speaking to me, you know, and, and, and that's the same way it is with me. I go and I hear some people and, and it's just like nails on a chalkboard. I mean, it's like, oh, I can't hear them. I can't relate to them. Nothing they're saying to me is making any sense. But then you go and some people are just so clear and you hear it and you get it and you feel it. And it's just, you know, mm, it's right there. I'm not trying to be for everybody. I am trying to be authentically me. And as I be authentically me, if it resonates with you, wonderful. And that's how it should be with all of us, that we show up. We show up in the way that we know to show up as ourselves and give our take on what we get, on the message that we get, on the love that we get. Let that love flow through us. And the people that that's for will get it. They'll get it and it will be exactly the right message for them. Ooh, you know, and, and, and it's, it's so wonderful. I, I want to, I want to share. I'm, I'm getting short on time and I wanted to share this, um, particular passage out of here. And, um, for some reason it's not jumping out at me. And when it's not jumping out at me, that causes me a little concern because I know, um, that when something is supposed to be shared, it just literally jumps off of the page. But since my mind keeps going back to it, I'm thinking that I'm really supposed to share it. And as I keep flipping through here, I see these little arrows that is saying, okay, read me, read me, no, read me. And I'm not reading those because I've got something else in mind. So, um, where is it? Um, it, you guys, I get so excited about this stuff. I get so excited. Oh, wait a minute now. Because here is something else. I was, um, as I was, as I was thinking about love today, I was thinking to myself that, you know, a lot of us, you know, we, we, we talk about when they, in this book, when it was talking about 
testing something out and seeing if the idea or the feeling is always there. Um, many people who, who try to disconnect themselves from a body, from their bodies, get confused and try to figure out what is a feeling. You know, what is a feeling? Is a feeling a, a, a thought or is it a sensation? You know, what is a feeling? So I just saw this pointed out to me. Where are my glasses at? They're down there on the floor. Um, ooh, so one simple way, one simple way, uh, we still know, like, let's see, where am I reading from? One simple way to see what is required is to remember that everything that comes into your awareness has come to you to serve as a mirror. Woo! You have called all these people and events into your life to show you parts of your consciousness you have not wanted to look at before. This does not mean that if you meet a lecher that you are one. It means that you have judgments about lechery. Is that how I say it? Lechery, lecher, lechery. And to be assured, if you judge against others, somewhere in your psyche you have judged against yourself. You have asked to be shown that part of you that needs to feel superior and does so by judging another. Ooh. I love it when you just open up a book and turn to something and it's a saying, it's reaffirming exactly what you're saying. Every time you judge my friends, understand what you are doing. You're stepping on somebody's neck in order to stand up that much higher, not in the world's estimation, but in your own. The habit of judgment is the most divisive habit you possess because it separates you from others more than any other trait. Judgment is an attempt to make what is one into separated parts with the hope that your part will be superior over other parts. But what you are really trying to do is make yourself feel equal. For if you truly knew yourself to be better, comparison would be your response. Ah, but if you truly knew yourself to be better, compassion would be your response because you would understand that judgment is not a quality that ever heals. Judgment does not heal anyone or anything at any time. Judgment is a killer. So those who judge against their fellow man must be responsible for realizing that they are desperately trying to keep their own self-judgment out of their own sight. Ugh! There is a part of your psyche that doesn't want to look inward, so it tricks you into looking out there. Oh, I love that. I Come as a Brother, it's a book by Bartholomew. It was a channeled book, but nonetheless, it is a wonderful book. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I just love that. So, so you guys, I know there are certain people who seem to always activate points in you, those, those ideas in you, something in you that just wants to, you know, to lash out and, and, and to judge or to, to, to like fight back, you know. I, I know that there are certain instances where I'm, you know, that I am, do I want to say misunderstood? So, so my motivations a lot of times is to, to show people themselves. I mean, to show them parts of themselves. And so, so so it's so funny. Um, I'm 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 trying to think of the of the uh, of what happened just recently, but I was listening to something. I was was I listening to something or somebody, and um, for some reason in the translation there was something that was lost in the translation. Like um, I, okay, so this this took place a while back ago. I I went to a workshop. And the workshop was um, for a position that I was working in. And at this particular workshop, 
they wanted us to work on our communication skills. So they wanted us to um, be able to guide each other through a maze, not a maze in, in a real sense, but we had to lead each other. You know, we had to pair up in groups and, and they were based on, based on our work partners and they were supposed to be able to lead us across the room. So uh, the first thing was, is that the guy who was my supervisor on this particular project, him and I were working together and they put a blindfold on me and he had to tell me without touching me and without me asking questions of him, he had to tell me how to get from where I was out to um, to pick up an item and then get back where I started. So he had to talk me through this totally blindfolded. So the funny thing was, is that, OK, so here we go. He starts talking to me. And so he says to me, Sandra, go north. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking, what north? What does that mean? You know, and so I'm I'm sitting there and I'm trying to figure out what does it mean for him to say go north? I can't ask him. And, and I don't know what the heck north is. So I kind of guess and it's like, OK, so I run into a table or I run into somebody else or I run into this, I run into that, you know, and so it's like, OK, so here we go. And then he tells me now I've run into the table and then he tries to tell me okay go west and I'm thinking I don't understand west you know go then he says go um go left and so I understood left and but I went too far left and I just turned and did this thing and I was still so confused so it's so interesting because you know he didn't realize that you know when we speak different languages people and it's the same language but we have different ways of communicating and so a lot of times we don't understand each other from a particular perspective you know so everybody is not you know it's like some people just resonate with other people more so than anything else so in this particular instance i remember when, when it was my turn i did something that i thought was simple i thought i said to him okay what three steps in the two o'clock, two o'clock direction, you know, and, and to me, I knew exactly what two o'clock was and he knew exactly what two o'clock was, but he never thought to tell me to go two o'clock. He was thinking to go do north or go do south or do, you know, thinking, what is that? 90 degrees, he would say, 90 degrees. And I'm like, what does 90 degrees mean? <laughs> So a lot of times we have to find things, um, ways of communicating and sharing that resonates with with us and then get some collective understanding about um, about that sharing and, and how to talk and all that other stuff. Because we're, you know, everybody doesn't hear things the same. We've all got different languages and different methods. But love says... Love says that I try. Love says that I continually come back and, and I let that love flow through me. I let it flow and I do what is necessary in order to communicate with you. Love holds no grievances and love created me like itself. You know what? And, and I don't know if I got to where I was trying to go to with this or not. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I certainly got somewhere and um, and through all my talking, I hope that you understood exactly what it was that I was trying to say to you. You are love. You were created in love and and love is what you are. Um, so Lynn is here. I love Bartholomew. Yes. Cliff and Rudy read from him on Friday nights here. Really? Ah, Barrett. Barrett is here. Barrett Hadim is here. He's up in the wings. So I guess I, it's time for me to start closing. So you guys, um, hey babe, uh, bless your heart. Thank you, Lynn. She says I'm gorgeous. I hope to meet you someday in purpose. I, uh, 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 in person. I hope to meet you too. Um, thank you so much, you guys. I am here every Tuesday, 6 p.m. And um, today I was reading from I Come as a Brother by Bartholomew and the 67th lesson of A Course in Miracles. So, uh, you know, I will hopefully share some stuff again with you next week and we'll see what that will be. Um, so my website, SandraSetter.com, I'm supposed to meet with 
uh, that woman this week, Anita, to finish up my website and the redesign of my website. So please sign up with me if you are on Facebook, like me at Sandra Thrives. Um, follow me on Facebook, Sandra D. Bishop. You can also follow me on Twitter. I, I know sometimes my, my tweets are off the chain, but um, San Bishop on Twitter. It's S-A-N-B-I-S-H-O-P on Twitter. So I hope to see you soon and um, that you'll connect with me, reach out to me, whatever. Um, and I'm here right here on Ustream as well. Ustream.tv, Sandra said it, is the, is the channel. So I love you. Remember, God loves you most of all. Barrett is up next. I, you guys, I'll see you guys soon. I love you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I'm turning over the mic. Yay. And for those of you who have tuned in to Ustream, thank you so much. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, to be with you, and to share with you some love here on Ustream.tv forward slash Sandra said it. And uh, I hope you will sign up so that I can get you on my mailing list and keep you informed of what I'm talking about, where I'm talking about it, and all that good stuff. So, um, all right. I'll see you. I'm going to stop recording. Y'all can look at me if that one too.